Scientific experiments offer an insight into the world, usually in hopes of improving quality of life or by solving an issue that hurts millions. But what happens when the scientists performing these experiments care more about the results than keeping their patients safe? Welcome back friends, I'm your host Kennedy and today on Most Amazing, we are counting down some of the most cruel and gruesome things ever done in the name of science. So get ready cause this is the top 10 scary science scientific discoveries that are pure evil. Starting us off at number 10 is the monster study. In 1939, speech pathologists at the University of Iowa set out to prove their theory that stuttering was a learned behavior that was caused by a child's anxiety towards speaking aloud. So how did they go about testing this theory? Well, for starters, all the subjects were orphans, and they told these impressionable minds that they were going to be receiving speech therapy. From there, they split the 22 orphans down the middle, providing half of the subjects with positive reinforcement and praise of their speech fluency, while the other half was belittled for making any kind of speech imperfections. Essentially, the negative half was told that they were doomed to start stuttering once they began to speak, and then told that they were stuttering even if they weren't. So just straight up mind games. Once the seed was planted, they would sit down with the orphans and insist they did not speak unless they would be able to speak right, meaning without a stutter. Despite the fact that most of them never stuttered to begin with. Eventually, the orphans began shutting down, some refusing to speak entirely, all based on a false accusation. The entire experiment caused an insane amount of psychological harm to the students, and some even developed speech impediments through the sheer gaslighting of being told they had one. Coming in at number nine is the Milgram experiment. Named after the psychologist Stanley Milgram, who spearheaded the experiment, this study began in the summer of 1961 and looked at testing the limits of obedience. Many academics at the time wanted to take a look into what was at the core of an authoritative personality and how someone could be swayed to commit something that they didn't want to do simply because they believed they had to. Once the study began, two groups were made. One group was assigned to be actors, and the other group was tasked with shocking the person in the room after they answered a question wrong. What group two didn't know was that group one was not actually being shocked, just acting as if they were. As it turns out, an incredibly high proportion of the subjects continued to shock the group despite thinking they were hurting them, simply because they felt they had no other choice. But later, another scientist thought the experiment needed to be amped up as he hypothesized people could have felt the victims were faking it. This new study included real life dogs as the subjects being shocked, and test subjects apparently openly wept while still following orders to shock the dogs. I mean, first of all, why bring the sweet puppies into this? And secondly, the psychological harm that was caused by these people feeling forced to harm others is just evil. Coming in at number eight is Kurt Blome. One of the many evil scientists during World War II was Kurt Blome. And just like the rest of them, he too performed indescribable acts on the prisoners in hopes to further scientific understanding. Or at least, that's what was being said at the time. His main choice of torture was purposefully injecting the prisoners with cancer and typhus, but not because they were looking on how to cure it. No, they literally were looking on how to best cause it. The reason behind that was that Blome was in charge of all biological warfare in the SS, and so his experiments aimed to find the best way to use these diseases against their enemies, debilitating them. I mean, bio warfare as a whole is an insane concept. Like just imagine researching how to best infect your enemies with an incurable disease in order to win a war. It's so wild to me. But what is truly mind blowing about the whole situation is that despite being arrested and put on the doctor's trial for his evil doings in 1947, and admitting to what he had done, the US intervened in his prosecution for wartime atrocities and got him off the hook. From there, the US Army Chemical Corps hired him to work on biological warfare projects in their country. So not only did he get away with his evil experiments, he continued on with them for another country's benefit. Coming in at number seven is J. Marion Sims. Widely regarded as the father of modern gynecology, Dr. Sims gained 
gained most of his fame from doing experimental surgeries on slave women in the mid 1800s. He's quite a controversial character in medical history for several reasons, because while he did provide advancements like the invention of the speculum and developed new surgical techniques for dealing with the female anatomy, he also performed on unconsenting slaves without anesthesia. And not to mention, the reason he didn't use anesthesia was not because it wasn't available to him. It was because he believed that the operations were quote, not painful enough to justify the trouble. Further, there were several of his patients who suffered extreme complications. One woman almost died from sepsis after a sponge was left inside her, and another woman was performed on a total of 30 times. Many in the medical community have condemned his work as they feel he was manipulating the social institution of slavery to perform human experimentation, and that despite what he may have discovered, countless women were tortured in order to do so. Coming in at number 6 is Karl Klauberg. Another horrible scientist during World War II, back in 1942, Klauberg approached Henrik Heimler, who was a major figure in the German party at the time, and asked if he could receive a large number of women for research purposes. From there, his proposal was accepted, so off to the cruel camp he went. Once he was there, the so-called research began. I mean, truthfully, it was really more human torture under the guise of science. I'm sure you're wondering just what was Klauberg experimenting? Well, he wanted to figure out how to sterilize women in the most cost-efficient way, so he would inject formaldehyde directly into their stomachs without any painkillers. He he experimented on thousands of prisoners, but only 700 survived, although all were left sterile. Now, as I'm sure you can put together, the reason behind this forced sterilization had to do with eugenics, but on top of putting formaldehyde in the victims, he also mentally tortured his patients too. In order to make sure that the experiment had worked, he needed to inseminate them to make sure that they wouldn't conceive. But for an extra layer of cruelty, he would tell his patients that he injected them with animal sperm to try and create a monster. Coming in at number 5, the Tuskegee study. Back in 1932, the United States Public Health Service began to dive into the natural progression of syphilis if left untreated. And while that is very valuable knowledge to know about in order to prevent complications in the future, there are definitely better ways to go about it. In this study, 600 poor and illiterate men, of which only 399 previously had syphilis, were hired and none were told about what the experiment was going to be for, or that they had a life-threatening disease to begin with. The 600 men were instead told that they were actually receiving free healthcare, meals, and burial insurance in exchange for participating. What's even more sick is that even though penicillin was proven to be an effective cure in 1947, the study continued all the way until 1972, essentially needlessly infecting hundreds of people and watching them die of a disease that already had a cure. It's just insane that this went on for so long, and it definitely is one of the most evil experiments to have seen the light of day. Coming in at number four is the Stanford Prison Experiment. Probably one of the most notorious experiments ever recorded is the 1971 Stanford Experiment. In 1971, Philip Zambardo set out to test the nature of human nature, specifically what happens when you put good people in evil situations. To do so, he set up a two-week study and paid college students $15 a day to play guards and prisoners. The day prior to the official start, those assigned as guards were given an orientation and provided uniforms. The next day, those assigned as prisoners were mock arrested by the police, a detail that utterly blindsided participants, and taken to the jail for the study to begin. Immediately upon arrival, they were dehumanized, forced into a strip search, given an ID number, and sent to their cells. Nearly immediately, things got out of hand. By day two, guards were harassing the inmates with psychological and physical abuse and prisoners were attempting to rebel against their treatment, which only exacerbated the abuse, prompting the guards to strip the prisoners of their uniforms, take their mattresses, and force them to relieve themselves in buckets. On the third day, alliances were being formed, offering rewards to prisoners with good behavior, and by the fourth day, 
full on riots were breaking out. Things escalated so badly that the experiment ended on the sixth day, a whole week before it was scheduled to end. While incredibly controversial, the Stanford prison experiment has been the basis of psychologists and even historians understanding of how even healthy people can become evil when placed in certain situations. Next up at number three is the Willowbrook experiments. In the 1950s, one institution ran a very, very dark experiment that I honestly can't quite believe was able to happen even then. The institution was for young disabled people, specifically those deemed to have a mental illness or a mental disorder at the time, and due to highly unsanitary conditions in the institution, many contracted hepatitis. You would think this would maybe make them go, hmm, maybe we should tidy up around here, protect those that are under our care. But that was not quite their approach. Instead, Dr. Sal Krugman proposed an experiment to try and develop a vaccine. Now, while I can appreciate the thought that was behind his proposition, rather than testing on the already contracted citizens, they actually began purposefully infecting people with the disease to assist in the experiment. Now, don't get it twisted, there were many folks against this from the start, but ultimately parents of the admitted people gave their permission to affect them and use them in the study, so forth they went. Kind of crazy to believe that someone would actually go along with that, but apparently they didn't seem to care too much about infecting disabled people with a deadly disease. So. There you have it. Coming in at number two is Dr. Sigmund Rascher. As we have covered by this point, there were many, many evil scientists researching cruel experiments during World War II. And one of the worst doctors of the time was Dr. Sigmund Rascher. When he joined the army, he asked the leader if human subjects could be provided at his disposal. And by 1942, his wishes were granted. He began conducting experiments in pressure chambers where he would simulate a high altitude and then quickly alter the pressure to simulate the conditions of a pilot free falling with no oxygen. But he was most well known for his cruel freezing experiments on 300 prisoners, supposedly to figure out the best way to warm up soldiers who experienced hypothermia. He would either force his victims to remain outdoors completely naked in freezing temperatures for up to 14 hours, or would place them in tanks of ice for three hours, measuring their pulse and internal temperatures all the while. From there, they would warm up their victims, experimenting with a variety of different temperatures, including boiling water, often causing further harm. Along with his other forms of torture, Sigmund would also administer polygal, a substance to aid in blood clotting, and then shoot or amputate a limb on his victim to see the speed at which they would bleed out. I mean, you have to wonder what happens to someone in their life to make them this cruel and evil. And last up today in our number one spot is Shiro Ishii and Yuna. At 731. During the 30s and 40s, notorious microbiologist and surgeon Shiro Ishii led the development and application of biological warfare for the infamous Unit 731. Shiro had long awaited to develop biological warfare, something that was against the Geneva Convention at the time, so in 1936, when he was promoted to senior army surgeon and granted full control over Unit 731, Shiro Ishii unleashed all evil. With no one to tell him no, Ishii began his evil experiments on live humans as he believed he could not get the results he was looking for by testing on animals. Ishii was notorious for injecting his subjects with deadly diseases under the guise of vaccines so that he could watch and study the effects if left untreated, leaving his victims suffering horrifying symptoms and eventually letting them die. But. That was only the tip of the iceberg. Victims of his evil experiments would also have limbs amputated and reattached to other parts of their bodies while conscious and without the use of any anesthesia, or be put into pressure chambers until their eyes literally escaped their skull. It's estimated that nearly 10,000 people died at the hands of Shiro Ishii's cruel experiments. But perhaps most insane of all is that after the war ended, he was never charged with any war crimes, as he traded the information obtained from his experiments for immunity and lived out the remainder of his life in Japan a free man. Well there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know down in the comments of any other cruel evil scientific experiments you know of. I'll see you next time.